welcome back to my channel. My name is Tina and today is a true crime Sunday. This week's is going to be the Bloody Benders. They are considered America's first serial killers. Unlike usual, I will not have a ton of pictures because this happened in the 1870s. There's not even court transcripts. It is an interesting case. There will be graphic content, but mostly just about what I'm discussing instead of pictures. I'm going to be uh, priming my face first with my Scandinavia Priming Spray. Okay, now that that has dried down, I'm going to prime with my Thank Me Later by Elizabeth Mott. And then I'm going to prime my eyes with my Thank Me Later. Picture yourself back in the Old West and you're, you know, settling the country in Kansas and you're trying to go down the Osage Trail. You find this little inn, just a tiny little shack, um, clapboard shack like they had back at that time. It says in a little board sign that's above the door, the Bender Inn. It has a store and stuff and then there's like a dinner table and everything and a tarp that separates the house. Just this tiny little thing out in the middle of nowhere, which wasn't untypical for the time. And most people traveling west either had money or a few possessions. They were, of course, traveling and taking everything they had with them to reach their destination. And this is right when they'd opened up the Native American lands, moved them to a reservation. And we're not even gonna get into my opinions about that. I live on a reservation in Montana. You're heading west to settle this land and you find this little cabin on your way that is selling whiskey and tobacco and other things you're likely to run out of as you're traveling. It's probably one of the very few stops. It's a place you can get a meal. Ma and Pa Bender are there, as are Kate and John Bender. They're supposed to be brother and sister. And John is out by the road directing people in, saying, oh, you should come in, you know, and meet my sister Kate. These guys are spiritualists, and they moved there with a bunch of other, like five other families of spiritualists. Spiritualists at that time were kind of an odd deal because if they had called themselves that at a time before this, they would have been branded as witches and burned at the stake. They did seances. So if you wanted to speak to a lost loved one, you would talk to Kate. At this time, apparently in that area, uh, this was an acceptable thing to do. Like I said before this, they would have been in serious trouble. So I just used the Wet n Wild concealer as well as Tarte Shape Tape and prime my under eyes. I'm now gonna set that with some RCMA no color powder. Kate can heal you or speak to your dead relatives. You can get a hot meal, you can buy some stuff. So you stop by. Now, if you looked like you were wealthy, they would set you at something called the place of honor. This is according to true accounts of people who came forward afterwards and talked about their experience at this cabin. A lot of what I'm gonna talk about here is going to be word of mouth, and it is 1870, so the Old West. So the details on this are a little bit sketchy. Well, a few people came forward afterwards talking about it, and there were some really odd goings on there. I have the Smashbox trios. Absolutely love these. I think they are amazing. And I'm just setting my eyes with this neutral color. I'm sorry that this one is gonna seem a little bit all over the place because there are just so few true facts that I could find. You'll see pictures as usual, but you know, it's the 1870s in the Old West. You go to this little store and they seat you at this place of honor, which is right in front of that tarp. Well, if you looked like you had money, I'm gonna guess if you were paying for Kate's services and showed that you had money, you were probably more likely to be a victim. I can't say that for sure, just a guess. Pa or John Bender, John Jr., would stand behind the curtain and bash you in the head with a hammer. Then you would get your throat slit. Most people are saying it was the women who did it, most likely Kate. Um, she had apparently threatened several people with a knife. Clue right there. So where their settlement was, their little piece of property, was right on the Osage Trail. So it's literally right in the path of where everybody's traveling. And their little store is literally right off it. Probably one of the very few places to find things. It's in LaBelle County near Cherryville. And all of a sudden, people are disappearing. Now they know people are disappearing and there's been a lot of talk about the people disappearing, but nothing was really done about it because people went missing all the time on that trail at that time. It's very dangerous to travel west. This man who's really important, 
Dr. West goes missing with his, I believe it's his infant daughter, no name given. So she, they go missing, but they are the, the brother of Colonel York and the cousin of a senator. At this point, you know, people are like up in arms. This guy's going around asking lots of questions, wanting to know where his brother went to. And he's one of the few people who went looking for his last relative. Because like I said, not a lot of money, not a lot of news, the mail is unreliable. But he wants to know what happened to his brother, so he goes looking for him. And all signs disappear of him in Cherryville. He was there, they know he was there, and then he just went missing. They say, oh yeah, he was here, he stopped at the inn, and then he left. And he hears this rumor about this woman who was threatened with a knife at the Bender cabin. And he's like, oh, wait, <laughs> maybe that could be important. And there's all these rumors about all these missing people. And at this point, it's quite a few. It's like 20 people have gone missing in this area of Kansas. Colonel York goes back. They have a meeting. And by all accounts, Pa and John Jr. Bender are at this meeting. Everybody's there. They decide to get a warrant and search everybody's property. Sounds like a plan, right? There's like, must have been a pretty big storm because inclement weather stops them from immediately going and exploring all the homesteads around there. So I'm just taking the black in this and I'm gonna use that as my transition shade. People are talking about this. They know something's going on. They're about to go search everybody's properties. Well, somebody after the storm notices that the Bender store looks like it's been abandoned. There are starving animals dead cows. It definitely appears to be abandoned. That of course sets up an alarm. So they get everybody together. They go out there looking around and sure enough it's definitely been abandoned, right? They're gone. Nobody knows where. They obviously took off right before the storm because there's an eight-day clock and it's still running. They go into the cabin. They get looking around. There's not much there as far as personal possessions. They find a bible and a few things, but there's no clothes, there's no nothing. Well, then somebody notices this, this trap door, this right behind the curtain, this right behind the table, where people sat to eat. It's been nailed shut, so they pry that open, and they immediately are struck by this awful scent. And it's a dark little cellar, it's only like eight by eight. One of the guys is a butcher, and he says, all right, I'm, you know, everybody else out, I can handle this. He gets down there, and there's this big huge stone that's like seven by eight or something. And he says, hand me a hammer. And they find three hammers under the stove, which is really weird. So they take one of those hammers and they start busting up this rock because it's, you know, the stench of death down there. He breaks it and all of a sudden, I mean, it's just putrefying scent. So they start digging around down there. It smells and stinks. They dig down three feet or so. The soil is just drenched in blood, but there's no bodies. So now they're feeling a little discouraged. They come back up. Okay, maybe we're wrong. Maybe these aren't the people who are doing this, but that's weird that they would have all this blood down there. Well, the storm has just happened and somebody says, you know, they're always tilling the garden. Like it's always freshly tilled. And I don't know if you know what tilling was like back in the day, but it wasn't easy. The Colonel is sitting in a buggy and he looks out there and he sees, because of the rain, a depression. It's like a grave-like depression. So they go out there and they have those metal rods that they use to, you know, probe the soil to see if there's something in the soil. So they start probing around and right away they find the body of Dr. York. So now they know that these people have been, you know, at least killed this guy. I'm gonna put some more black in there because I want that underneath where I'm gonna put this glitter. So they're out there, they find the doctor's body. The daughter is underneath him and they're only buried a few inches deep. And the doctor is buried upside down. Now, if you know anything about witchcraft, you'd know that there's some significance to that. They also supposedly found some unusual carvings behind the clock, one of which was of a man and his head and his genitalia was enlarged and kind of in an X shape, which is also something known in witchcraft, especially in blood witchcraft. I'm gonna use this blue because it sort of matches my shirt, right? Look at that. First, I'm gonna use some glitter. They're out there, they're probing around. They find the doctor's body and the little girl's the little girl doesn't have any marks on her, so they surmise she was buried alive. After that, they keep looking around and they find more bodies 
and they find body parts. They never do find who everybody is. There is a list of the people they did find, but there's a whole bunch of them that were unclaimed. So they're still buried in the Bender Cemetery in Cherryvale, Kansas. Look at that sparkle. Okay, these people have been killing people, lots of people. They've been chopping them up, they've been feeding them to the pigs, they've been doing all kinds of things with them. Yikes. Well, now the manhunt is on. So they go looking for them and they find their buggy near Thayer, which is about 12 miles away. The horse is lame, one of the horses is lame, the others are starving, they're nowhere in sight. But in there, there's a train. So they go and they find out from the conductor, these two couples, split up. One of them went south to Texas, supposedly to the outlaw area where nobody was going to go find them because law enforcement would go to try to find people down there and never come back. Mom and Pa Pender, though, went east, uh, probably to Missouri. They never find these people, ever. They look for them. They put out a $3,000 reward for them, which is a huge sum of money at the time. People claim that they killed them and that they buried them in the desert or whatever. They go looking through this Bible that they found at the cabin. And at that time, I don't know about you, but my grandma certainly did this. Everybody kept their genealogy in a Bible. So they go through this Bible and they find out Ma and Pa Bender aren't technically married. Now this wasn't uncommon at the time. It was common law marriage, you know, it's the old west. His name isn't even John Bender. Pa's last name is actually Flickinger and Ma Bender's last name is the name of her first husband, Griffith. She had multiple husbands and 12 kids, but the only child they ever found was Kate, sort of. The theory is that all of Ma's husbands, most of them died from blunt force trauma to the back of the head in one way or another. I'm gonna use super cat liner. So they're looking for these people and they're looking hard. They put ads in papers about 10 years later, they actually find a mother and daughter that they think are Ma Bender and Kate Bender. They pull them in for questioning and they both say about each other, yeah, that's definitely Ma Bender, but I'm not Kate Bender, I'm Kate's sister Sarah. And Ma Bender says, oh, that's definitely Kate Bender, but I'm not Ma Bender, I'm like her cousin or something. They never do have enough evidence to prove that these two are in fact Ma and Kate Bender because people would come who were from that area and they just couldn't be sure which is weird because Kate was super attractive and men would fall all over themselves for her. There are several stories that came out later from people who went to the Bender farm. So I have this little pure glitter thing. These are similar to glitter eyeshadows by Stila. I'm just gonna put that on my inner corner. So there's a preacher who said that he went to the cabin. While he was there, he was offered the place of honor, the seat of honor. It gets this really weird sensation that something's wrong. He says, no, I don't want to sit there. Kate threatens him with a knife and he's like, holy crap, and takes off, probably saving his life. Now, I don't know how true any of these true accounts are. People tend to exaggerate things after the fact. People do that after crimes like this are made public. Even if they don't mean to, they still do. Eyewitness accounts are horrible. And one has to imagine that at that time, they were even worse. Another guy says, that he went to the cabin, was offered the place of honor, looks up on the tarp and it's all gross and oily. And he's like, no, I don't want to sit there. And Kate literally lunges across the table at him with a knife also. It's really pissed off. Why nobody ever reported this? I have no idea. The only one that was ever reported was the girl who Kate threatened. And this became a huge deal at this time. There was like so many stories made about them. It is the greatest unsolved mystery of the Old West. So here's my take on it. I suspect these people practiced what's known as blood magic. And there's people who practice blood magic today that are never kill anybody. The occult, you know, is widely misunderstood. There's actually very few occult murders. Most occult people are people who are into spiritualism or Wiccan or even witchcraft. No, they don't kill anybody. But I have a feeling that these people were actually people who did and that was why they were killing people because a lot of the people they killed didn't have a damn penny to their names. 
there was no reason to kill them other than if they were practicing something like that and the symbolism and stuff that people talk about that was in that cabin really lead me to believe that and like i said i live on a reservation so my view of nature-based religions is very positive but i have a feeling these people perverted it all to hell we're killing people to try to converse with the dead i love this mascara but look what it does like if you blink at all it creates such a mess i also think ma bender had been killing people and was probably the ringleader to why people were being killed the idea that she had so many husbands so many of them died so she was probably the reason they started doing this and i'm sure it started out as something for money i'm going to cover up this whole disaster i have going on under my eyes with some concealer so it turns out that ma and kate bender are the only two that are actually related there may have been a marriage between the brother and sister but nobody's sure they think that because in that bible john jr's last name is really gibraltar from that bible is how are they sure that that bible was there and you would think they would have taken it with them especially since it said that pa always carried that bible it's fascinating because there's so little information in the actual criminals but a ton of information so that we know that they actually committed the crimes. There's been different movies made about this. There's a Deadliest Women and a Deadly Kin episode on Investigation Discovery. There's several YouTube podcasts about this that are just fascinating. I'll have links to those below. Finding it very difficult to go back and forth between talking about the case and doing my makeup and remembering to tell you everything I'm doing. John to Blue lip liner. And then I'm going to use my Smashbox Mob Squad Liquid Lipstick. I haven't really done anything with my lower lash line, so I'm going to take one is in Holy Crop, and I'm just going to take the dark brown color out of here and do my lower lash line with it. And then I'm going to take my For Real Her in a deep brown color, and I'm just going to do my waterline with that. I'm sorry that the details on this are sketchy, and I bounced around quite a bit on this one. So let me know if you're okay with me doing the pictures of what I'm doing. That way, I don't have to stop talking about the case. You know, I'll still explain, like if I'm smudging something out or something, I'll still explain that. One of the things they did that I just found hilarious, when they were looking for bodies in the cabin and they didn't find any but when they were looking for them they actually picked up the cabin and moved it and then the cabin completely disappeared because people at that time would come along and to collect souvenirs they would just take pieces of it and so it was all carried away a long long time ago i found the whole case interesting i found it interesting that nobody in any of the research i did talked about between the occult and it was never even mentioned What's truly awful, though, is that the people in that area, those five other homesteads that were around them, probably had a clue as to what they were doing and did nothing to stop it. One guy, when they were trying to question him to find out about the benders, they actually lynched him a couple times. They never got anything out of him, but, you know, why would you admit to anything? You're going to definitely hang then. He actually did hang years later after he molested and killed his 12 year old daughter. My question is, did they go on and keep killing? And I'm going to tell you, I think that Ma Bender and Kate Bender did. At that time, people didn't connect things the way they would now. There was no database or anything like that to keep track of crimes like this. Please like, subscribe, and share. Let me know what you think. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!